In this tutorial, we want to determine the appropriate way to report measurements when they've been involved in a calculation. And this time, it's determining an appropriate number of sig figs if the calculation involves a multiplication or division. Now, multiplying and dividing numbers is not going to be quite the same as addition and subtraction, as it's not just a matter of lining up the decimals this time. In fact, it's a little bit easier. For instance, you are needing to report the area of the part here in square centimeters. The length measurement and the width measurement came from two different sources. So how are we going to report the resulting calculation? What's the appropriate number of sig figs? Again, the answer becomes clear when you remember that all measurements have one uncertain digit at the end. We should therefore have a rule that keeps only one uncertain digit at the end of our final calculated number. So, let's work through the calculation here. Remembering that the last digit in a measurement is the uncertain digit, we'll identify the uncertain digit in each number, that is the last number in each. So let's do the multiplication, identifying all digits that were formed as a result of an uncertain digit, which of course makes them uncertain. The blue numbers result from the first uncertain digit and the yellows from the second uncertain digit. Green numbers result from a multiplication involving two numbers that were both uncertain. At this point, we do the addition at the end here, tracking our uncertain digits down the columns. Again, if an uncertain digit is involved in a column addition, then the result is also uncertain. We see that we have four uncertain digits in the answer, which doesn't work for us we need only one uncertain digit. So anything to the right of the six here has to be removed, leaving only one uncertain digit. If we look at it closely, we can track the number of significant digits back to the number of significant digits in each one of our original measurements. And we note that the number with the least number of significant digits in the multiplication determines the number of significant digits in our result. The rule of multiplication and division is, thus, we only keep as many digits as the least number of significant digits of the numbers used in our multiplication or division. Therefore, in our original problem, we could simply identify that the 6.2 is the one with the least number of significant digits, that is, two significant digits. Given this, we know that our answer must also have exactly two significant digits. Therefore, we round so that we only have two sig figs in our answer, and it's as easy as that. In this tutorial, we learned about how many significant figures is appropriate in the final answer of a calculation where there is multiplication or division involved. The rule is actually pretty easy. Just determine the number of sig figs in your measurements and then use the least number of sig figs for your answer. I'll quickly point out here that if there are constants in the calculation, they have no impact on the number of sig figs in the answer. For example, if you were calculating the perimeter of a circle, perimeter equals 2 pi r, neither the 2 nor the pi would impact the number of sig figs in the answer. Only the sig figs in the radius would be important, as it's the only true measurement. 